from I can remember, I always wanted to play for Arsenal. I was having a great period uh, in my first year. I was on fire. When the, the oppo opposing player made the tackle, I knew straight away something was bad. I was in complete agony. Gary Lewin took me into his office. He said to me, you know, um, do you want the good news or the bad news? You know, I had the same surgeon as Ledley King and he said to me that my knee was worse than his. And at the time I just thought, okay, I'm injured. I've got to come back and I'll just go again. Um, but fate wouldn't have it that way. Ryan Smith was born in the North London borough of Islington. Growing up a stone's throw away from Highbury, he came through the Arsenal Academy at the same time as players including Cesc Fabregas, Gail Clichy and Quincy Iwusu Bay. Ryan had ambitions to play for his boyhood club Arsenal, idolising the club's legendary players. I used to pretend to be Ian Wright in, in the playground and you know, in the estate that I lived on as well. Um, so for me, when you know, I signed my scholarship, it was just a dream come true and I just knew from that moment that I would embark on the journey with everything I've got um, in, in order to be a pro. At Arsenal, once I joined, just progressed and progressed each year, um, but things started to get really serious when I started playing for England um, under 16s. So I was 14 years old, which was a nice touch. From that point onwards, it was just about getting into the first team for me. Ryan didn't have to wait long for his first team opportunity. He was only 16 when he was named as a substitute in the Arsenal squad to play Rotherham in the League Cup on the 28th of October 2003. The build-up to it was pretty intense for me because, again, it's my uh, boyhood club. Arriving at the stadium, seeing all the fans, and I mean, it was, it was so special for me. You walk in here, the marble halls, and you see the photos around um, on the walls, and it's just the history, like I said, you knew that you had to deliver if you played for Arsenal. Also making his debut that night was another highly rated academy prospect, Cesc Fabregas. I mean, he had everything. We played a game, I, I, rem I remember it clearly, we played a game against Coventry um, at London Colney. It was like, I think, his first game. Um, I remember him walking up to the pitch and he was putting his shin pads in. Everyone was ready, but he was putting his shin pads in last and for, is he ready for this? Absolutely bossed it. Being so young and uh, making your debut, especially here as well, it's a dream come true, isn't it? I mean, a moment that for me is one of my proudest ever, for sure, for me and my family. Being a rare English commodity, a left-footed winger, the future looked bright. Then, on the 14th of February 2004, in a reserve match against Ipswich, he suffered a cruciate ligament rupture as well as a double microfracture, resulting in four keyhole surgeries. When the, when the, the oppo opposing player made the tackle, I knew straight away something was bad. I was in complete agony. And then it subsided afterwards, as, as it always does, for a little bit. But I, know, I noticed something was wrong when um, I tried to uh, walk uh, while I was at home the, uh, the next day. And my knee was giving way, and I was confused as to why it was doing that. I think it was two or three weeks later, we had the results from the scan. And uh, Gary Lewin took me into his office and uh, he said to me, you know, um, do you want the good news or the bad news? And I said, well, I want the good news first. Um, and he said to me, you'll play again. So I was a bit concerned as to why he said you'll play again. And the bad news was that he said my career would be finished by the time I was 26, 25, 26. So how did you react to that? I mean, it was like, it was like a, a crazy sort of period because to go from, you know, youth team, under 19, reserves, first team, all within the space of six weeks, to them suffering an injury like that, um, I mean, it's, just, it's like I lived my dream all in, I don't know, I'd say four months, five months, you know, it was, it was pretty uh, euphoric, but also devastating at the same time. And um, yeah, it was devastating to hear, you know, that my career would be cut short, but I just knew from that point I had to just play because I love football um, and I didn't want to stop. Ryan went out on loan to Leicester in September 2005. In the following March, he came back to Arsenal, where his first team opportunities were limited. He then had spells at Derby, Millwall, Southampton, 
and Crystal Palace before taking the decision with his agent and close friend Ryan Badu to go stateside and head to the MLS with the Kansas City Wizards. We decided, you know, there was a lot of options abroad and Ryan's style was well suited, like a lot of English players. We managed to get him a, a deal in America where he probably played the best football of his career. It's yeah. interesting you say that because a lot of English players are maybe hesitant about going abroad. Yes. What do you think about that? And you were an agent. Yeah, I, I think that was the case. I think now when you look at the likes of uh, Jaden Sancho, you know, the likes of Reese Oxford who've gone to the Bundesliga, which is an absolutely fantastic league. I think that, that is a, a change in trend. I think we've got fantastic young players in this country as the sort of uh, junior England tournaments have shown. And I think that it's going to be something which happens uh, more often. So I think that there's a lot of op opportunities for players who aren't playing at, you know, championships is one, is one of the best leagues in Europe and obviously the Premier League. But if you're not doing that and you're a really good player, I think there's op opportunities out there for you. America was probably my favourite period. Apart from that early stage at Arsenal, um, America was definitely my favourite period in football because what I struggled with when I left Arsenal was, you know, you play the Arsenal way um, and then you go into the championship and it's all up there, you know. So as much as I tried to adapt to it, I felt like me as an individual and what I believe in my beliefs, um, I don't like that football. That, you know, fair play to teams that play like that, fine, you know, that's, that's, that's fine. But for me, I'm a purist of football and I really appreciate the game played beautifully but the main problem um, was my knee so I couldn't really sustain um, matches how, I, how um, a normal pro would. What happens if you go to a club and for, for, for example me at Derby and the manager don't fancy you? Um, is it because you have a bad attitude or is it because you just don't play the way that he wants you to play? It's not because you have an attitude. Um, you know, I certainly weren't letting off fireworks or anything crazy like that, you know, so for me, it's just, um, it's just a matter of taste for the manager, really and truthfully. Despite a successful period in the MLS, followed by a spell with Greek side Xanthi, Smith had been taking painkillers and anti-inflammatories throughout his career until he was forced to retire at the age of 26. It's sore pretty much all the time, to be honest. Um, you know, I wake up in the morning and the first, first thing I do is like bend my knee just to you know, flex it a little bit um, because there's so much uh, damage and, and scar tissue under there. But throughout my career, I've had seven knee surgeries, um, three of them very serious. So the arthritis in there is, is really bad. I was told when I was in America, the surgeon said that um, my knee is like a, literally a 70 year old man, literally. So for me, um, it's, it's hard to get, get by day by day uh, without pain. It's just one of those things. Despite the setbacks in his footballing career, Ryan was determined to make use of his knowledge of the industry. He's now working at one of Europe's largest digital media agencies with some of the biggest names in football, including Angel Di Maria and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Ryan sees himself as an example to younger players for how precarious the game can be. I had coaches say to me when I was younger, you know, mentally I'm not sure if I was going to be a player. Um, I had that at a, a, a young age, um, that and that was at Arsenal. Um, it it feels uh, at that age you've got to be strong. Luckily, I was with the upbringing that I, that I had. But there was a there was a point for me in my career when I was at Derby. Um, I actually, uh, and this is the first time I'm speaking about. It, I went into depression because I joined from Arsenal um, and I signed for a club where. I'm not even sure if the manager wanted to sign me. Um, I didn't play that much um, and uh, things just didn't work out there, to be honest. If you were going to give advice to like a young, budding footballer from Islington who wants to play for Arsenal, what would you say to him or her? Get career-ending insurance. No, <laughs> um, no I, I would literally just enjoy yourself. I think the most important thing reflecting uh, on my career now is to enjoy it and not be overawed. I think you need to stick to all the training sessions you've had from when you were a kid up until pro, all the virtues that you've got as a, as a person and as a player. You need, to, you need to play your own game as well. 